This is the pre-recording of our fourth tutorial summary with the topic of networking. We aim for each summary recording to support our students in the internship, encouraging them to engage in discussion and interact and interactive five tutorial classes and to share experiences and information during their internship with the support of a career consultant for feedback at the same time. My name is Bita Zafranlu, a senior lecturer and unit convener of professional internship and with me Liz Kurosara, career consultant, cover this topic. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodian on, of the land on which we gather, the Wurundjeri people of Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. Today's networking snapshot will unpack, revisit the DOTS framework, what does networking look like, why do we need to network, ways to develop our networks. In workshop two, we look at the DOTS model of career development, the idea that successful career decisions and transitions are informed by self-awareness and opportunity awareness. Today, we will talk about networking and communication as professional skills and the impact person, personal and industry connections can have on your career development and decisions. Connecting with other people, with organizations, group, and industry around shared interests and goals is key to the successful transition from being a student to being a professional, the tra transition from university to the big wide world of work. Developing your professional profile is part of this. Actively communicating your story, your interest, and what you can contribute. And being self-aware, aware of opportunities, and being authentic in the way you do this. Don't wait until your final year of a study or graduation to begin these practices. All work and all careers depend on people communicating, sharing information and ideas and collaborating. Professional relationships and networks are at the heart of this. Let's start with a quick recap. Going back to the DOTS model, we covered in the second tutorial, especially let's consider the self and opportunity parts of DOTS. Self-awareness is all about understanding our interests, likes and dislikes, our ability, our skills and strengths, our values and motivations, our wants and needs. They play a big part in our career decision-making as we need to ground our career decisions on who we are and what's important to us. Just as important is our understanding of the opportunities available to us. What is possible? What is available? What is realistic? This includes our career research of occupations, job roles and industries, qualifications, pathways, the labor market. And a big part of this category is our professional networks. Observing, listening, talking, and learning from others at uni, in our workplaces, and in industry helps build our awareness and gather all kind of information. So let's talk about networks. What feelings and words come to mind when you hear the word networking? For many, it can invoke anxiety and fear. The idea of having to speak to lots of strangers at a large event can be incredibly confronting. But is that networking? Networking can actually look like lots of things. It might be sitting around having a, co a coffee with your colleagues. It might be chatting to someone in another team while you heat up your lunch in the office tea room. 
or it might be having an online one-on-one -on -one session with someone, either a colleague or someone external to your organisation. As you can see, it's not all about the suit and tie business card swapping events we see or traditionally think of in large boardrooms. Networking is simply communicating with someone else. So now that we've dispelled the myth about what we typically think networking is, let's consider what networking is all about. It's about making introductions, making an impression, finding common ground, making a connection that's mutually beneficial around the work you do or what you want to do. So creating a community that's going to support you and one that you can also support. Networking is about creating a long-term, mutually beneficial quality connection rather than just looking for people when you need help. It's about accepting and providing assistance to others. So always being reciprocal. Networking is not connecting with someone to ask them for a job. And professional networking isn't forcing a business card onto a stranger at a conference asking them for a favour. The importance of students broadening their networks and refining their network capabilities is increasingly recognised as critical to their employability. As we see from the first quote, networks can assist with access to career opportunities. Fugati mentions networking as a way of understanding our values and expected professional conduct. Professor Bridgestock links networking to the opportunity for students to visualise and discuss their career pathways. These are all incredibly valuable things that can stem from networking, which is why it matters so much for students to get involved in it. And if you need any further reasons as to why networking matters, then consider this. Approximately 60% of jobs are estimated to be obtained through who you know, rather than through direct application. But between 80 to 90% of uni grads only apply for jobs using these same direct application methods which means students are missing out on lots of opportunities by not building and utilising their networks and instead sticking to less effective means of securing employment. Think about maybe yourself or friends or family who have found a job because someone else helped them or recommended them to their boss or even hired them directly. I think most of us can think of someone who has found a job that way or have that own personal experience ourselves. So thinking about where you are now, how you can um, build some professional connection either at work or beyond. Start with your manager and colleagues that you directly work with. You could also consider formal channels such as meetings with wider teams, conferences, communities of practice, mentoring program or real platform such as LinkedIn. Professional associations are another great way to build connections. Informally is a little uh, easier. It might just be grabbing a coffee with a colleague, having some informal chat on Teams, or posting or and commenting uh, on internal communications uh, platform like Yammer. Let's consider the ways we can develop our connection in a bit more detail. In-person connections are obvious and probably the most natural way to connect with others. But in our digital age, um, our presence online play a big part in building our networks. Developing a digital identity is essential these days. What comes up when we Google your names? Ideally, it should be our LinkedIn profile rather than all the parties' photos on our Instagram account. Thinking about the impact of your digital footprint and making sure it is uh, typed up and strategic is important for creating a positive and professional impression. Consider also how you can build relationships through social media and how we can develop our professional learning networks. LinkedIn is a great um, starting point in building some online connections and a great way to network and learn from the career paths of others.
It is essential that you have an update professional profile to give the best um, first impression. There are a lot of great uh, resources online uh, looking at how to make an impactful LinkedIn profile. And I would encourage you to look at a couple. We can then use LinkedIn to connect with Swinburne alumni using the alumni tool and gather valuable information for our opportunity awareness research. If you are on LinkedIn, and I strongly encourage you to have an account, you can access Swinburne alumni through the main Swinburne page. Click on the alumni tab and use the search filters to find former or current students who study the same thing as you or are working in the same area you want to get into. This is a great way to expand your network while tapping into the knowledge of students who may have been in a similar situation or study path as you in the past. Your network can play an important role in your professional learning. Ultimately, we want to be a part of a professional learning network, network so that when we do need a job or information or support in our careers, we know where to turn. What might you do to develop your professional learning network? Think about how and where you can contribute. It might involve joining a professional association or LinkedIn group, for example, or even conducting informational interviews with alumni or others in the industry to get more insight into their roles. Your contribution might be small to start with. You can start by following groups or organisations, responding to their posts and perhaps sharing your thoughts, even if it's just a, a like or a thumbs up. And when we talk about professional associations, what exactly do we mean? Uh, professional associations act as a peak body for professions um, or professionals working in the same or similar fields representing their interests, advocating for them, and sometimes acting to regulate a particular profession. The Financial Planning Association, for example, acts to represent the profession of financial planners and protect their interests. Professional associations and industry bodies can have a range of purposes and functions. For us, they can provide opportunities to network with our professional peers and valuable learning and professional development opportunities. You can join your professional association as a student member and the fees for that membership are often heavenly, heavily reduced. Sometimes they're free. So it becomes a simple way to start connecting with your profession. You can easily find your own professional association by Googling your study discipline and the words professional association. For example, if I Googled economics and professional association, I get the Economic Society of Australia. Try that and see what you come up with. Another way to expand your network is through LinkedIn groups. LinkedIn groups serve as gathering places uh, for LinkedIn users uh, with shared interests, topics, and industries. They provide an excellent pl platform for building relationships and offer a space for like-minded individuals to connect, exchange ideas, collaborate on projects, and more. Another way to develop your connections is via informational interviews. An inter informational interview is where you can um, take the lead and conduct a, the interview yourself. You get to ask what you want to know, whether it is about an organization, a specific role, or a potential career path. Um, pathway that you would like to contribute. Um, it's an informal catch-up. It might be over a coffee for 20 minutes. Think about who you might interview to gather more information about careers or possible future workplace that you would like to join. You could start by conducting an informational interview during or after your internship. Is there someone in your team you could approach? 
You can also reach out to alumni via connections on LinkedIn. Informational interviews are a great way to connect with others and conduct valuable research at the same time. And they typically involve nothing more than a um, structured uh, conversation. So to summarize, networking is a great way to learn about common professional interests, connect authentically with others, learn from others, hear examples of other people's career stories, find out about different career options, and also to build your professional and industry connections. That brings us to an end of today's summary video. Our next and last video is uh, we look at professional future and career stories. Looking forward to meeting you all in our interactive tutorial to practice these career focused concept. Thank you. Thank you, Enzo. Thanks, Peter. Thank you.